This video is the first part of Lesson 8.7, Graphs of Sine and Cosine. We are going to be talking a lot about what's called the parent sine function. So with other functions, we have parent functions as well. Our parent sine function is going to be y sine theta. The a right there, we'll talk about what that means, and we're going to talk about what the b means. But if you just see y equals sine theta like that, that means there's a 1 right there and a 1 right there. So it's just that's the parent function. And then it will change according to what a and b are. Then with a cosine function, same thing. You're going to have your y equals cosine theta. Now the theta, that's just an input variable. It could be x, it could be alpha, it could be beta. Those are the common ones that are used for the angles. Um, I usually use theta, but it doesn't really matter. It's just an input variable. And so again, it will change according to what A is and according to what B is. Okay, the definition for amplitude. So what does the absolute value of A stand for right there? It tells us what's called the amplitude. Now we have seen this number in front of other functions before, like when we say y equals, and then we have 2, and then we have x squared, it means that there's a stretch. It's the same idea there. And so the a is going to be an absolute value. So keep in mind that when I ask for the amplitude, it's always positive. Okay, that's you're going to always give a positive answer for that. But it tells us how, li how high and how low things go. So if something's going up this far and then down this far, then the amplitude is um, this much. So if, well, we'll talk about it more as we get into this. But anyway, whatever the number a is, the absolute value of it, that will be the amplitude. So if we have 2 sine theta, then the amplitude would be 2. If we had negative 3 sine theta, then the amplitude would be positive 3. So it's always going to be positive, and it's just that number in front. The next one, the domain. All sine and cosine functions have a domain of all real numbers. And if you think about the unit circle, as far as like how many degrees does the unit circle cover, the unit circle can cover any number of degrees. It can cover positive degrees for an infinite amount of time. It can also cover negative degrees. And so that's why the domain is all real numbers, because it can be either positive or negative, any number of degrees or any number of radians. The next thing is what's called the period of a function. This is probably the most difficult thing to deal with. And the period of a function is how long a cycle is. And so as the sine or cosine goes through an entire cycle, which is in standard function, it's how long does it take to go through an entire circle. Um, the cycle is standard of 2 pi, and so that's an entire circle. But it can change. And so the period of a function is going to be affected by b. So when you look back in this, that's going to affect the period. Because the standard period or the length of a cycle, how long does it take to cycle and completely through a sine function? It's going to take 2 pi. And so if b is different than 1, you're going to take 2 pi and divide by b. And that will be your period. So if b is 1, then it's just 2 pi. If b is something else, then you're going to divide 2 pi by that number. So we'll do some practice with that. And that's just going to tell us how long it's going to take to complete an entire cycle. So we'll talk about that more as we go. Okay, the next one is the range. So the range, so the domain is all real, but the range is different. The range is going to have a high and it's going to have a low with sine and cosine functions. It's going to depend on the amplitude. So it's not going to be all real numbers for every function. It's going to have a high point and a low point, but it's not just going to be whatever a certain number is. The standard range for your parent function is between negative 1 and positive 1, but it can depend on the amplitude, so how much of a stretch is there, and if there's a vertical shift. So those things can affect your range of your cosine and sine functions. Okay, the last thing before we get into graphing is what's called the phase shift, and that is something that we already know about as a horizontal or a left-right shift. So if your graph is going right or if it's going left, that's going to be a phase shift. Now, a lot of times when we're talking about sine and cosine functions, we're going to deal in radians. So instead of saying that we're going to shift right two units or we're going to shift left one unit, it would be something like a phase shift would be pi or a phase shift would be pi halves. And so it could be something besides 
a number, if, if it's just a straight number, it's going to be either um, degrees or it's going to be radians. We're not going to say like one unit or two units. Okay, before we actually get into graphing our sine and cosine functions, let's remember what our unit circle looks like. And so if you have a, your, your unit circle with you, that would be helpful for you for this lesson to have that as we refer back to it often. Now I've written on this one the uh, cosine and sine for the first quadrant. So I've got all of those listed. And then along with that, I've also written the decimal approximations for those numbers because they're good to know and be aware of. And so we'll see how to use that as we go through our graphs. Okay, the first one we're going to do is we're going to do the parent sine function. And so there's a 1 right there, there's a 1 right there, so it has an amplitude of 1. So let's write that down. Amplitude is 1. The period is 2 pi divided by 1, so just 2 pi. What that means is it means that if we look at our graph and you look along the x-axis, it's going to complete an entire cycle between 0 and 2 pi. So when you get to 2 pi, it's going to start over. And if you think about your unit circle, once you get to, um, you get all the way around the circle, it's going to start over. So once you, you start right here and you go around and you go through the sines and cosines and everything, and then once you get here, it starts all over again. And so that's what the cycle is. And so because it's a standard uh, sine curve, it's just going to take one period of 2 pi. So the way that we graph this is if you look at zero radians and you look at your unit circle, what is the sine at zero radians? It's zero. And so we're going to put zero there. Now you can go through like pi fourths and it's square root 2 over 2, which is 0 0.707. That's kind of hard to graph. I mean, it's going to be like, you know, somewhere like that. So we can actually just kind of skip to something that's more convenient. So when we go to pi halves, the sign there is 1. So I'll do that. And then the next time it's a 0 is when it's at pi. So following the unit circle around, so at pi, your sign is 0 again. And then when you get down here to 3 pi halves, your sign is negative 1. So I am going to go to 3 halves and put negative 1. When you get back to 2 pi, it's back up to 0. So what the sine curve looks like when you connect your dots, it's going to look like that. Now it cycles, it continues on in that direction. It also continues on in the other direction. So we're going to complete that by continuing our curve in both directions. And so it's just, you know, up and down and up and down. So it just goes down and up and down and up. It's a wave. And so a lot of times it's referred to as a sine wave. Okay, the next one we're going to do is we're going to do the cosine function. So the cosine, we're going to do the same thing except we're going to be looking at the cosine on our unit circle. So if we look at zero on our unit circle, our cosine is one. So we're going to go over here to one. And then if you go to pi halves, 90 degrees, that's at zero. The cosine is zero there. If you go to pi, then the cosine is negative one. And if you go to 3 pi halves, it's back at 0. And then at 2 pi, it's back at 1. So the cosine curve is going to go like this. Whoops. Go like this. And then it continues in both directions. So you can keep it going. And so if you notice, if you compare those two, the sine and the cosine, they're actually exactly the same, except for they're shifted. So if you took the cosine curve, it's exactly the sine curve, it's just in a different spot. So the main thing to remember is with your sine at zero, it's gonna be at zero, and with your cosine at zero, it's gonna be at one, and that's how you can look at them and tell the difference. So we're gonna be using the parent functions a lot, and so as we do all of our other graphing, usually what you wanna do is you wanna start by recognizing the parent function on that. Also, please notice that along your x-axis, I do have these marked as radians, that's kind of a standard thing to do. You could run into where you have like 45 degrees, 90 degrees, um, 135. You can do that. Also, there's no rule that says it has to go by pi fourths. You could say this is pi six, pi thirds. Like you can, you know, if you have an empty scale, you can scale it whatever you want. This is just what I scaled it as. It's kind of a nice standard because it's just kind of easy to go. Like you go from one down to zero 
and you've got a halfway point and it just kind of makes it easy to do other things. And so we'll see that as we go.